Hi, and welcome back to my channel. On this video, I'm going to share my to be read pile for November. And uh, typically what I do in these videos is I pick out 17 books that uh, I choose ahead of time of things I'm looking to read during the month. And then uh, later in the video, I do a random pull of a, an alphabet letter. And then I pick five random books from my Kindle list that start with that letter. And those books add up to 22 books that I'm going to try to read in the month because that is my challenge this year, is to read 22 books every month in the year 2022. So uh, let's get started with the books that I have on my list. And there are 17 that I have already kind of pre-chosen that I think might be fun to read in November. The first book is called Things You Save in a Fire by Catherine Center. This is one of the books by Catherine Center that I haven't read yet. She has a new book out, I think called The Bodyguard that I also haven't read, but there are several books of hers that I have read and I've really enjoyed them. Um, this is a book, I believe, about a firefighter and uh, yeah, a female firefighter in Texas. And uh, I think it is kind of a romance as well. So I'm looking forward to adding this one to my list. I also picked up a book called Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. And this is a book that I have heard quite a bit about from a range of different people. So I'll read the description of this book. Come home, Vera's mother called and Vera obeyed. In spite of their long estrangement, in spite of the memories, she's come back to the home of a serial killer, back to face the love she had for her father and the bodies he buried there. Coming home is hard enough for Vera and to make things worse, she and her mother aren't alone. A parasitic artist has moved into the guest house out back and is slowly stripping Vera's childhood for spare parts. He insists he isn't the one leaving notes around the house in her father's handwriting, but who else could it possibly be? There are secrets yet undiscovered in the foundations of the notorious Crowder house. Vera must face them and find out for herself just how deep the rot goes. So, um, sounds interesting. I'm also picking up a book that I have not gotten to yet this year. It's been on a couple of my monthly lists. It's The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. And, um, I think this is a, a book about kind of like a, a new, um, kind of like a locked room mystery set in a Paris apartment building in which every resident has something to hide. Uh, there is a woman who comes to live in this apartment building um, with her half brother. And uh, then when she gets there, um, he's not there. Her half brother has kind of disappeared and she's trying to figure out what's going on with his situation. And of course, neighbors are involved. Um, so I've always thought that sounded interesting. I just haven't had a chance to get to it yet. I also picked up a, a book that I heard about on social media. It's called The Brilliant Life of Eudora Honeyset by Annie Lyons. And a uh, description reads, it's never too late to start living, infused with the emotional power of me before you and the irresistible charm of Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. A moving and joyous novel about an elderly woman ready to embrace death and the little girl who reminds her what it means to live. Eudora Honeyset is done with this noisy, moronic world. She has witnessed the indignities and sufferings of old age and has lived a full life. At 85, she isn't going to leave things to chance. Her end will be on her terms. With one call to a clinic in Switzerland, a plan is set in motion. Then she meets 10-year-old Rose Truwidney, a whirling pint-sized rainbow of color and sparkling cheer. Of course, all she wants is to be left alone, but then she has this child enter into her life. So. Um, next up, I'm going to pick up, finally, hopefully, Night Road by Kristen Hanna. This is one that I've been wanting to read for a couple of months now and just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, Kristen Hanna writes kind of some domestic thriller type books, um, and I'm looking forward to this one. Then I'm picking up uh, Lessons in Chemistry by uh, Bonnie Garmus. This is a book that a lot of people have been talking about. It's about chemist Elizabeth Zott. Uh, she is the first to point out um, that there is no such thing as an average woman. It's the early 1960s and her all-male team at Hastings Research Institute takes a very unscientific view of equality, except for one, there's a lonely, brilliant Nobel Prize nominated grudge holder who falls in love with uh, her mind. True chemistry results, but life, like science, life is unpredictable, which is why a few years later, she finds herself not only a single mother, but the reluctant star of America's most beloved cooking show, Supper at Six. 
of her unusual approach to cooking, which is uh, involving chemistry, proves revolutionary. Um, so it's a kind of a story about an unconventional woman in a more conventional time. I also decided to pick up uh, Lisa Gardner's One Step Too Far. This is the second book in the Frankie Elkin series. And um, basically it's about uh, a lost man and the shocking truth about why he went missing in the first place. Um, this is a woman who finds lost people and she learns of a young man who's gone missing in a national forest. Law enforcement has abandoned the search, but a crew of people led by the young man's father are still looking. Sensing a father's desperation, Frankie agrees to help, but soon sees that a missing person isn't all that's wrong here. And then more people start to vanish. So a uh, mystery thriller there. I'm also gonna pick up the next two books in the Armand Gamage series by Louise Penny. The first is A Better Man. Um, and then the second is All the Devils Are Here. Uh, in A Better Man, we are focusing on uh, let's see, catastrophic spring flooding, blistering attacks in the media, and a mysterious disappearance. Greet Chief Inspector Armand Gamage. Um, let's see. Even reading this description gives away uh, this is spoilers to the series, so I'm not going to go much further, but it looks like uh, a, a father approaches him pleading for help in finding his daughter. And once again, Gamage is trying to create calm in the midst of chaos. I mean, that, that is basically the, the storyline there. Um, all the devils are here. There is a sinister plot in the city of light in Paris. So this is a, a book that takes place in Paris. And um, it looks like he is traveling with uh, a friend in Paris and that person is critically injured and it's not an accident, um, but a deliberate attempt on the man's life. And uh, there is a key that's found in his possession and this takes him into the Paris archives. Uh, looks like it is involving coded works of art in the storyline. So I'm excited to continue this series. I would definitely recommend starting it from the beginning. Um, because there's a lot of spoiler things that you're going to find as you go throughout the books. I am also adding again to my list, The Rise of Magics. This is the Chronicle of the One series, uh, the third book in the series. And I did get through the, the second book um, within the last couple of months. I would love to continue on with that. So working through that. I'm also going to add the next two books in Wheel of Time. I am four books away from finishing this series. So the first book is Knife of Dreams, and the second book is The Gathering Storm. Um, this is, The Knife of Dreams is the last book that Robert Jordan wrote by himself. Um, the, the last three books of the series were co-written with someone because he was dying. So um, this is kind of an interesting place to be in the series because we might see a shift in kind of authorial voice and um, looking forward to seeing what that, what that looks like. I also added um, House of Sky and Breath, which is the second book in the Crescent City series by Sarah J. Mass. I read the first book in this series earlier this year, and I have the second book um, in hardback and on audio. Um, so I thought I would pick that up and see what I think about where she takes the rest of the series. And then the last four books I have in my grouping of 17 books uh, is the Divergent series by Veronica Roth. This is Divergent, Insurgent, Allegiant, and then a story collection called Four. And I think I've only read the first couple of books in this series, but it was a long time ago. And so I thought I would pick up this uh, quartet and uh, finish out my November list with some young adult fiction. I thought that sounded like fun. Okay. So next up, I am going to pick my alphabet letter for my alphabet challenge and then go into my Kindle and see what books I might find there that start with that letter. So first, let me pick out the letter. And I have picked the letter L. So let me go into my Kindle and see what books I might have that start with the letter L that I want to add to my list for this upcoming month. Okay, so I already have found one that I know I want to add. It's called The Last Flight by Julie Clark. And this is a book that I think has been 
out for a little while now, but it's basically about, I think it's a woman who's trying to vanish and like two women switch tickets, like they switch plane tickets, but then one of the planes crashes and one of the planes doesn't. And so there's kind of this mystery of the woman who's trying to vanish and then um, the other woman like assuming her identity. So um, yes, the last flight is one that I'm gonna add to my list here. Let's see what else I can find. I'm also gonna pick up a book called Learning by Heart, Teachings to Free the Creative Spirit. And this is a book uh, that is by an author named Corita and Corita Kent. Um, and it says, author, artist and educator Corita Kent inspired generations of artists and the truth of her words, we can all talk, we can all write. And if the blocks are removed, we can all draw and paint and make things still shines through. This revised edition of her classic work features a new forward and a chart of curriculum standards. Her original projects and exercises developed through more than 30 years as an art teacher and richly illustrated with 300 thought provoking images. So basically about teaching art, which sounds interesting. So I'm going to pick that up. I'm also going to pick up a book called Lease on Love by Fallon Ballard. This is a romance novel that I've seen a bunch of people talking about and have wanted to dig into that. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I am also going to pick up a book called Legendborn by Tracy Dion. And this is a book that I have seen some people just completely raving about. They love it. And it says, um, this is a contemporary fantasy that reinvents the King Arthur legend and braids together Southern folk traditions and black girl magic into a searing modern tale of grief, power, and self-discovery. So this sounds really interesting. Um, and it says, after her mother dies in an accident, 16 year old Brie Matthews wants nothing to do with her family memories of her childhood home. A residential program for bright high schoolers at UNC Chapel Hill seems like the perfect escape until Brie witnesses a magical attack her very first night on campus. Um, let's see, a secret society of so-called legend born students um, hunt creatures down, a mysterious teenage mage who calls himself a Merlin uh, and who attempts and fails to wipe Brie's memory of everything she saw. The mage's failure unlocks Brie's own unique magic and a buried memory with a hidden connection the night her mother died Another Merlin was at the hospital. Now that Brie knows there's more to her mother's death than what's on the police report, she'll do whatever it takes to find out the truth, even if that means infiltrating the legend born as one of their initiates. So uh, that sounds really good. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my list. And let me see here. What else? I've got one more to choose. I think I'm also going to pick a book called The Lonely City Adventures in the Art of Being Alone. This is by Olivia Lang. And let's see the description here. It says a dazzling work of biography, memoir, and cultural criticism on the subject of loneliness told through the lives of iconic artists by the acclaimed author of The Trip to Echo Spring. When Olivia Lang moved to New York City in her mid thirties, she found herself inhabiting loneliness on a daily basis. Increasingly fascinated by the most shameful of experiences, she began to explore the lonely city by way of art. Lang conducts an electric dazzling investigation into what it means to be alone, illuminating not only the causes of loneliness, but also how it might be resisted and redeemed. Sounds pretty interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to my list as well. There are a lot of other L books here, but those are my five that I'm going to go ahead and pick out for November. If you uh, keep an eye out for my November TBR debrief video, you'll get to see what I was able to finish this month and uh, maybe books that were on this list and also some extras that get added in at the last minute. Um, but I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And until then, happy reading.